Chloe Caldwell here. Welcome to my channel. I'm really excited that you're here and I'm excited to introduce my new series where I will teach you all my inside tips on how to become a travel writer slash content creator and start traveling the world for free. So yes, if you're new here, I am a travel writer and UGC content creator and I get asked all the time about how I got started in this industry and how I get free hotel deals and travel to these destinations for free as a travel writer or content creator. And since I get asked about this all the time, I figured why not make a series where I can really teach people everything that I know. So to start out, I thought I would just introduce myself and share a little bit about my story and my journey to becoming a travel writer. So in this video, I'm just gonna be sharing a bit of my background, how I got started, and what got me to where I am today. There will be a sprinkle of inside tips on things that you can do to get started too, so make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to learn more. Okay, so where do I even begin? I will say that I was always destined to write in the lifestyle space. I was obsessed with Seventeen Magazine when I was in high school and I knew that I always wanted to become a writer for a magazine. At the time, I really wanted to do fashion and beauty and just women's lifestyle in general, and that's where I actually started out. After graduating with a journalism degree, I ended up working for a fashion and beauty women's lifestyle type of brand and I actually did start on their customer service team. I knew that they had an editorial team so I was like I just need to make my way into this company and hopefully eventually there will be an opportunity to switch around and there was so I was in customer service for about nine months. Definitely learned a lot in that position. <laughs> But eventually a spot on the editorial team opened up and I applied and I was fortunate enough to get that role. So for a little over a year I was writing about women's fashion, beauty, and all those things. Which is super fun, um, but the work environment wasn't the best for me and I knew I wanted to change things up and find a new job or a new path, I guess you could say. By the grace of the stars in the universe, I somehow ended up getting invited on a press trip solely because everyone above me at the company couldn't go. So I was the editorial assistant and my boss was out of town, the social media manager couldn't go, so the social media director asked if I would want to go on this trip. It was to Jamaica and obviously without a second thought, I was like, absolutely yes. <laughs> And if you don't know what a press trip is, I can go into that in another video, but it's basically where a destination or hotel will invite a group of journalists to come and experience a place or hotel so that they can find their story and write about it. So I packed my bags and flew to Jamaica at a mere 23 years old, I would say. Yeah, I was 23. And that trip kind of changed everything. It really inspired me and I really didn't even know that you could do that as your job, like fly to these destinations and write articles about them. So I met a lot of other journalists on that trip who have been doing this for a very long time and it really inspired me to pursue a similar career path. However, there was definitely some turns in the road. I ended up quitting that job at the fashion and beauty company without a plan because I was honestly just so miserable and <laughs> was like kind of going through a severe quarter life crisis. And at the time, my boss basically told me, nothing I write makes sense. You're probably not gonna succeed. It was just like not a good environment. I wasn't at my best either and it just didn't work out. But it definitely was discouraging and I kind of questioned everything that I had done up to that point and what I wanted moving forward. So I kind of took a break and I ended up taking a sales position for about nine months. But then COVID hit and I feel like for a lot of people it puts everything into perspective and it kind of gave me that downtime to sit with myself, really think about what I wanted out of life and my career. And again, I'm still young and still figuring it out, but it kind of lit a spark back in me and I decided, F it, I'm going to quit my job again <laughs> without a plan again. Definitely don't recommend doing that, but it was COVID and honestly it just felt like the perfect time to pursue it. So I decided I am gonna become a freelance writer. 
and I really didn't know what I was doing. So I reached out to some other writers that I had just met along the way and that I had found on LinkedIn. So definitely recommend searching for people in, in the field to inspire you that you want to learn from and just reach out and see if they might be willing to give you a few minutes of their time to share advice. But anyway, that's what I did. And I got some great advice from a variety of writers in different types of travel writing or just freelance writing in general, like not in the travel space. And I learned a lot and I really just dove headfirst into trying to make this my life. <laughs> I, again, didn't know what I was doing, but I decided to start a blog, which I always recommend to people doing if they're just starting out and they don't have any published writing experience. Fortunately, I did. Of course, I was already at a lifestyle publication where I got to write a few travel articles here and there and got a lot of professional writing experience. But for those who don't, I always say start a blog and start documenting your travels and your life on there. That's what I did. I think I launched my blog in like June of 2020 as I was also trying to pursue freelance writing. Most of the work I did at the beginning was really random projects and like copywriting and things like that. And to be honest, I still do a lot of that. And it's likely that if you pursue a career in freelance travel writing, you're going to have to have some sort of other income source from different projects or a different consistent writing client or like another side job you know, working at a yoga studio, waitressing, whatever it is that you need to do to make ends meet, <laughs> do it. So I started posting a lot more on social media about travel and just lifestyle topics in general. And I really just committed every single day to making this my life. I would say that up until that point, I really didn't understand the value of consistency, but I was so determined and so focused on this goal that I had that I was working every single day towards it. And it wasn't always easy and a lot of the time I literally just wanted to give up and go back to what I was doing before. Like so many tears, so many calls to my friends, emotional breakdowns, I had it all. And I still do sometimes, but <laughs> it definitely, again, taught me the value of just perseverance and sticking to something that you really want. So after working day in and day out on achieving this travel writing goal that I had for myself, I eventually was able to get a hit. Before I got a real travel article published, I started really utilizing my blog and my social media. Like I said, I was posting about it, I was writing blogs about it, and at one point I started reaching out to hotels in my local area from like Los Angeles to San Diego. I'm based in Southern California, so I really was just reaching out to hotels everywhere around me. And I would say that I reached out to about 20 hotels, pitching myself as a blogger, content creator, slash travel writer that had potential coverage. Like I obviously didn't promise anything, but I did share my experience where I did have some actual articles published. But what I did guarantee was a post on my blog and a post on my social media. And after reaching out to like 20 to 30 hotels, I finally got a couple of responses and I was able to spend a night or two at both of those hotels. And that was kind of the first taste of traveling for free. And again, it doesn't need to be some extravagant vacation that you're using as your first piece of work. It can be a hotel down the street from where you live. So that definitely encouraged me and motivated me to keep going forward. It's those little wins that will really make the difference. So. Once I got those hotel deals, I was like, let's do this, I'm getting somewhere. And I kept pitching article ideas to various outlets. I did get a couple articles published, which was really exciting. But for the most part, it's difficult to build consistent relationships and articles with editors. Eventually, I reached out to an editor and they responded saying, I really want to work with you. It's not really in our budget right now, but like, let's keep in touch. And that was enough for me to... <laughs> pitched to this person every month for probably six months to a year. Like I was, like I said, being consistent, sent him ideas every single month and followed up with those ideas whenever I could. And I would get a response every once in a while. It was never a yes, but it was never a no. And so finally I sent an idea and they wanted it. And I was so excited because this was like what felt like my big break in my big moment. I finally was getting a big article published. And then they asked if they could get on the phone and 
instead of just hiring me for a single article, they asked if I might be interested in becoming a staff travel writer for that publication. And like, like I can still feel my heart racing after that phone call because I was truly just so excited. And that's kind of where it all took off. So I became a staff travel writer for a publication and it was only part time. So I was not making a lot, but I was traveling a ton and getting a lot of experience under my belt. And that kind of is what really skyrocketed me to where I am now. And again, by no means am I a like star travel writer. I haven't been published in like the world's biggest and best publications, but I do feel like I was able to really get myself into the industry and make a lot of connections and just establish myself as a travel writer. And that's exactly why I'm sharing what I learned along the way. So that's kind of what got me to where I am now. But unfortunately, as a travel writer, you're not making a lot of money because you're not getting paid while you're on the trips. You're only getting paid for the articles that you write about them. Unless you're like a full-time employee, that's a different story. But if that's the case, then you're probably not going to be traveling as much. But anyway, if you're like a freelancer contractor like I was, then you're only getting paid per article or like a monthly stipend, which probably isn't going to pay all the bills. So I was really struggling financially, even though I had a very glamorous looking life on Instagram and in my articles, it was a constant hustle. I definitely reached a point of burnout and that's why I decided eventually to take a full-time job. The position kind of just presented itself to me and it felt like the perfect time because I really did need a break. So now I've been writing full-time for a publication and it's back in the fashion and beauty space with a sprinkle of travel in there. but. I have had the privilege to continue travel writing on the side. Fortunately, my company has a great vacation policy and my boss is amazing and I am able to continue pursuing that passion on the side. So I'm still traveling the world for free and being able to reach out to editors and get articles published is basically funding my travel experiences and I hope to continue writing travel, whether it's on the side or if I go back to full-time freelance again sometime soon, we'll see. But yeah, that's kind of where I am today. And I know that was kind of a lot spitballing at you quickly, but I hope that you learned a little bit about me and that you're excited to learn more from me. Again, I don't think I have all the knowledge and I still think that I have a lot to learn. But after only doing this for a few short years, I really do feel like I have the tools to help other people do the same. And as I continue to learn more, I will continue to share more. And I hope that you can take something away from this and feel inspired to start reaching out to brands and hotels and traveling the world for freaking free because you can do it. If I did it, you can do it. And I firmly believe that. So let's do this together and subscribe, follow all the things. I'll see you soon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>